it's the info. It's the man with the info. Whatever you want to know, come join the man with the info show. It's the info. It's the man with the info. Whatever you want to know, come join the man with the info show. Okay, everybody, welcome. This is Information Man. I'm going to do my best to give my analysis. I'm going to put my foot all up into this because I've had time to sit back and observe uh, many people on YouTube, podcasting, who have given their opinion on one Kamala Harris. And I'm going to go over to her bio, um, some of the things she's done in California. Now, I'm in California and nobody knows uh, Kamala Harris like people in California. Nobody can give you the kind of insight because those of us that live in California, particularly myself, I lived in the Bay Area, particularly San Francisco. I know San Francisco politics. Nobody that I've seen on YouTube, now I know Professor Black has given great commentary, many people, but the difference and information man's commentary is that it's not going to be just about me trying to bash the sister, but it's about me looking at her record. Uh, Tone Talks did the same thing. Um, that Carlette, everyone's given their analysis and I'm going to give analysis, but I'm giving my analysis based on the fact that I've lived in San Francisco, lived in San Francisco itself for over 26 years or more, went to high school, elementary school there and college. OK, and I lived in Oakland for about 10 years for a dime. So I understand the politics in the city of Oakland. I understand how um, things go down. I understand San Francisco politics and I understand where what, what Kamala Harrison is all about, because I actually uh, maybe am one of the few people that are on YouTube. That's not a actual celebrity or a politician or some type of professional uh, journalist who have actually met her in person and had some small interaction with her. And I'm going to give my commentary to that. So what I want to do basically is let me just go ahead and uh, let's go over her bio, bio a little bit here. I hope everybody out there that's listening, uh, go ahead and support my YouTube channel. Those of you out there and the speaker dot com spreaker.com who support me thank you for listening to the broadcast this is broadcast style i want to thank everyone who has been supporting me now um you know uh kamala kamala harrison is 54 years old as we know she was born in uh october 20th of 1964 in oakland california so she's local and um she's been a part she's been a democrat member of the united states senate from California uh, since being elected in 2016. Kamala Harrison has become only the second black woman. And I know there are those of you who are questioning her black card because she does have a uh, East Indian mother because they even say that she's the first only black woman, but she's also um She's elected the first Indian American to serve in the chambers. So you got the dual, uh, what we call biracial. And I've never liked that term biracial because that's just to me another way to eliminate and marginalize uh, uh, black people. Uh, but nevertheless, this is what the sister is. We, we know what her back, some of her background is. Now, let me break down. She has a B.A., 
Uh, she has a BA from Howard University in Washington, D.C. Great university. I, I went there many years ago doing a centennial convention for my organization. And, I, and D.C. is an interesting town. Okay, so she got she, she graduated from Howard University in 1986. She went on to earn her law degree at UC Hastings College of Law in 1989. Now, I know a lot about Hastings because I went to San Francisco State. I had a lot of friends, uh, people that I went to school with who decided to go to law school. And Hastings is pretty much a pretty damn good law school in San Francisco. It's a public law school school. And at one point in time, uh, Information Man, um, I was thinking about going to law school myself. And in some ways, I, I think I probably should have done it. And I could still pursue that opportunity. So, so that's sort of a little bit about her background. Oh, and she served as Deputy District Attorney of Alameda County. Now, if you don't know where Alameda County is, that's the county in which Oakland, California sets in. And then there's a place called Al Al Alameda, which is a whole nother town. But that's the county in which Oakland and all that East Bay Area, as we call it in the Bay Area, is a part of. OK, so she was district attorney of uh, um, Alameda County from 1990 to 1998. And she later worked for San Francisco District Attorney's Office from 2011 and to 2016. Harrison served as attorney general of California, and she was then elected to the United States Senate, as I said earlier, in 2016. Now, let me just uh, say this. Let me just let me just say this. Now, they tout her as the first black and first Asian American attorney general, as well as the first attorney general in the United States history. She's also served as San Francisco District Attorney from 2004. So she's the first woman, Asian, black woman, because of her mixed race heritage in San Francisco. And as I said, I know San Francisco politics. Um, and like I said, I've grew up in, I, grew, I lived in San Francisco. I'm, I, I have family back east, born in Baltimore, but grew up a good portion of my life in San Francisco area. And I know the politics of the city. I know how it goes down. Um, there's Willie Brown. I'm going to bring up a soundbite from uh, from Willie Brown. And I've met Willie Brown as well. He's a member of my fraternal organization. Um, and that's sort of how I got a chance to meet uh, one Kamala Harris. I met her. I'm 49 years old right now. I met her in uh, 2004 when she was campaigning to become the district attorney of San Francisco. She came to a chapter meeting of my organization um, she happens to be a member of a sister organization to my, to, to my, to my organization. And I had a chance to see her in the flesh and talk to her as she was campaigning that time to become the district attorney of San Francisco. Uh, she was fresh. She was new on the scene. Um, her whole campaign stick at the time is that she wanted to change the juvenile system, the just the justice system in San Francisco as it related to the juvenile, how juveniles are dealt with and handled and how that would impact uh, particularly black young males. Now, that's that was the that was what she went with. That's what she said. That was her philosophy. That was her attitude at the time. And, um, you know, the thing about people when they run for elective office now, she's a prosecutor. That's been her history. And it's it's no secret that it's very difficult for prosecutors to become elected as presidents because prosecutors are not really what you would call very popular. OK. And a lot of times they end up putting being in situations in which they're compromised. They they make rulings that people don't agree with. Uh, and a lot of times prosecutors are lock, stock and barrel with the police. OK. So that's very important now. Um, she made a uh, very strong campaign promises. Um, we supported her. I was involved in her campaign at the time uh, when she was running for uh, attorney, uh, di district attorney of San Francisco, getting out there, encouraging people to vote for her, putting up the posters, the, you know, just doing all those sort of, sort of things that you do when you get involved in campaigns. I have to say, because of my firsthand experience with her, 
in, in terms of being able to briefly talk to her for a short time when she was promoting herself at that time, uh, she moved up the ranks pretty, pretty quickly. Um, and I'm a little disappointed personally because I don't think that most of the things that she said she was going to do at, as district attorney of San Francisco, I don't believe it really it came to fruition. And like most politicians, they say a lot of things to you to get your vote. They'll say whatever they got to do to get your vote. They'll use highfalutin slogans and things of that nature. And a lot of times you don't hear from them anymore. And so after she got in office, she never came back to meet with us again to give us tangibles. What we need when you're voting for someone, I don't care what your race is, black, white, Asian, Latino, and particularly black people, is that when someone is coming before you and they're giving you these highfalutin slogans and statements about what they want to do, you need to hold their feet to the ground for tangibles. Because if not, what the hell are we voting for these people for? Why? And we need to keep this in mind. We do not select the president. The, we, we elect presidents. We vote for them. So we hope our votes are going for them. OK, but we don't select them because usually what happens is, is that people that run for president in these different offices, they are selected for us. They got a machine behind them. They have people who have agendas behind them and they select these people. They groom these people to become president or, or any higher office. And then they simply put them before us and then they give us a bunch of jargon about what they're going to do for us. And then we buy into it, stock, lock, and barrel through these highfalutin slogans. Now, let me read something for you. In 1973, the Rothschild family, they met, um, there were about 12 wealthy men who met in Frankfurt to assemble a game plan on how to gain control of the world's wealth, natural resources, and manpower of the entire world. This is known as the 25-point plan for world domination. I'm going to leave you. This is what they're doing to us with these cunning politicians. And uh, I have to be honest, uh, Miss Harris is no different. Okay. Use mob psychology to control the masses. Okay. Without absolute control, one cannot rule efficiently. Okay. Now, this is very important. Preach liberalism to usurp the political power. Okay. Next. Politicians must be cunning, deceptive, and any moral code leaves a politician vulnerable. Okay? Now, next. Choose candidates for public office who will be subservient and will, ab will abide or obey to our commands so that we may be readily, they can be readily used as a pawn in our game. Okay? So, Use systematic deceptions and high sounding phrases. This is what politicians do. I'm going to say this again. They use systematic deception, high sounding phrases and popular slogans. The opposite of what has been promised can always be done afterwards. That is no cons of no consequence. OK, another thing that uh, politicians do in this country is they create financial panics. They use hunger, hunger, hunger. They control and segregate the masses. OK, now, another thing that uh, politicians do very well, and Donald Trump is really good at this, is use the press for propaganda to control all outlets of public information while remaining in the shadows clear of blame. These are some of the things that um, politicians do and have been used for. And as I read, the 25 point plan for world domination. So, um, Sister Kamala Harris, she's no different. Um, she's saying everything that we want to hear. Now, let me go over something. I'm going to go over her record a little bit, but let me let people know as I uh, look at something there. Um, in January 20th, as you know, Kamala Harris had a rally in Oakland. I know Oakland, and I'm going to play some footage of the of the rally. OK, and. What's most important to understand is that Oakland is a black city, even though it's got 25 percent below its population of black people has dipped because of gentrification. Let me just keep this very clear and very real with you. 
um, when I watch the footage, you don't see an overwhelming number of black people in the crowd. You see a sprinkle here and there. You see lots of um, mayonnaise people. Lots of, you know, you see a lot of that. And there was a lot. They didn't tell you about this. They don't want you to know this. There was a protest, Oakland protest against uh, Camilla, Kamala Harris for president campaign lunch rally. So she had a rally there and um, there were a group of people in Oakland. Uh, it says here, let me read this. What, what are you going to do in Oakland when Kamala Harris sets up shop in our town to push her phony progressive agenda? Her campaign slogans at this point is Kamala Harris for the people, but we know she has she is anything but a candidate for the people and all of the people, those who lost their homes to predatory banks. For instance, she claimed to be tough, principled, fear, fearless, but we know none of that is true. She certainly is not tough on the wealthy and powerful. She's just another ambitious person running for office trying to pretend she's, fur she's further, she furthers to the left than she ever actually has been. So she's further, okay? She pitches herself as a lifelong public safe, uh, safety and civil rights leader. And it's time we stand up to say hell no. Okay, jury people of color does not equal public safety and prosecutors violate defendants' rights is not civil rights. Among the early staff members she has chosen, including her sister, Mala Harris, who was a senior advisor to Hillary Clinton's 2016 campaign. We don't need and any more established Democrats and definitely not a prosecutor clo clothing. OK, her main campaign headquarters will be in Baltimore, Maryland, where one truly information man was born. But her West Coast operation will be run out of Oakland. Let's literally run her out of Oakland by not letting her pander her lies here unchallenged. She does not get to claim her record has been taken on the Wall Street bankers for middle class homeowners without being mocked in public. This is not a listing for organized protests at the campaign kickoff rally, but a call for concerned citizens and organizations to make plans to resist her campaign starting at the very first ever. Okay, so basically what's happening is, is you got people in Oakland called Occupy. You can find this on, on, your, on, your, uh, on your internet, Occupy Oakland. And they believe that Kamala Harris, they saying that she is not a champion for the people. She's not standing up for the people. Matter of fact, you, she's been a part and a supporter of these Wall Street bankers, predatory banks that have impacted black people, people overall, especially in the Bay Area, which is a very expensive place to live. So that's something I wanted to read. That's hot off the presses. You can find that on the Internet. It's called Occupied Oakland, Oakland protesters against Kamala Harris for president campaign lunch rally. So let me uh, get in, into a few things here. Now, let me read to you all uh, the, the committees that she's involved in. OK, uh, let me see. She's in, she's involved in some heavy committees here. OK, here we go. At the beginning of 115th Congress, Harris was assigned to the following committees, committees on intelligence Committee on the Budget and on Environment and Public Works, on Homeland Security and Government Affairs, Jurisdictions, and Campaign Themes. So that's the committees that she's currently involved in as only the second black woman, Asian woman, Indian, uh, East Indian woman is there coining her. She's got all these different um, on in our, in our government or this government. Now, let me also say something. Uh, for those of us black people out there who, you know, want to claim her as being black, uh, K Kamala Harris doesn't really identify herself, or at least I haven't seen her identify herself in public forms as being uh, black. She doesn't really identify with it on that level. Um, however, you know what happens with people like her. When they get around black people, they then will want to identify in the privacy of being around black people in some cases 
And in some cases, when they're in the public eye, they want to be this whole multicultural person. And I do have problems with words like people of color because people of color is just another way not to identify black people, okay? Because you can lump a whole lot of people within that people of color, but not all people of color are, uh, are, are, divided, are divided equally because we know that black people have caught a lot of hell in this country and a lot of other groups have been riding on our coattail for many, many years. The Civil rights movement was a movement that black people came up with, we created, we orchestrated, Okay, yeah, you had Jewish people that were involved in it as well. The NAACP was actually created by a Jewish organizations, Jewish people. Very much, that's well documented. But black people had paid a heavy price in this country. And we didn't come over here as immigrants. Okay, we didn't come on here in, in no Ellis Island. We didn't come over here in no ship liner with our clothes on our back. Other groups have benefited from what we've laid down in this country. And that needs to be noted. So let me... Go right ahead and um, let me reinforce once again her political stances. She believes that civil rights, justice and equality for all. That's one of her campaign, her pan, her campaign slogans. Uh, let me read here. OK, fighting for the voiceless and the vulnerable in our society against those who prey on them and share continuous continue those fights in the Senate. She will stand up for women's rights to choose and equal pay for equal work. She leads the challenge in against the LGBT discrimination work to pass comprehensive immigration reform, expanding across to voting and focusing on fixing broken criminal justice system. Now, let me say this. She's all in with the um, immigration situation. And I'm going to be honest with you. When immigrants come over to this country, who communities do they usually move in? They move into places like Oakland and they do impact pe black people. And I've seen this firsthand. They do impact us. And in Los Angeles, California, you've got the, the gang situation where you have these Latino gangs that are impacting uh, black people. I did a video about this where they're using multi cocktails to drive black people out of housing communities. Uh, the gangs are, are, are affecting us trying to kill us, trying to drive us out. These are things that are happening. And when, and when these people are allowed to come over here, it impacts us because it also under, it, it impacts us economically. And it, it impacts us definitely in our communities because most of these folks will come over here. And if they're poor, they're going to live in communities, socially, economically deprived communities where black people live. And it's going to be it's going to be some problems. And, it, and, and the reality is, is that there's there's not a black and brown coalition as much as we we want to say that or some of us may think that it's just not the reality. And so um, and, and a lot of these other groups that are over here, they don't cape for us when we're catching hell. They don't come out in mass and their organizations are not speaking on our behalf. Most people, when they come here, they're looking out for themselves, their own culture, their own people. So let's just get that clear. She's old, she says she's for criminal justice. She's for the environment. She's for foreign policies and higher education. Okay. So these are some of the things. Now, let me just say this real quick. This is Kamala Harrison's own words that I'm going to be reading off here. That's going to be in the video that I'm going to show you um, on this video. And she says this, and I'm going to go over her record just a little bit briefly. My whole life. I have only had one client, the people. Harris told a crowd of thousands of supporters gathered in front of Oakland City Hall, fighting for people meant fighting on behalf of survivors of sexual assault, a fight not just against predators, but a fight against silence and stigmas. For the people meant fighting for more fair criminal justice system and at a time when prevention and redemption were not in the vocabulary or mindset of most district attorneys, we create a initiate initial initiative to get skills and job training instead of jail time for young people arrested for drugs. Now that's a position that she's taken that you're going to hear in the video, but I got to keep it real with you. Harrison positions are very disappointed disappointed in criminal justice advocates 
Okay, so many criminal justice advocates are very disappointed. Now, I read the statements out of her that she said out of her own mouth. This is a quote, and you'll hear it in the video where she's talking about criminal justice and how she can make things better. But a lot of advocates are not happy with the positions that she has taken over the years. Consider her record, folks. Okay, as San Francisco District Attorney from 2004 to 2011, Miss Harris was criticized in 2010 for withholding information about a police laboratory technician, a medical technician who had been accused of intentionally okay sabotaging her work and stealing drugs from the lab after a memo surfaced showing that Miss Harris deputies knew about the technician's wrongdoing and recent convictions but failed to alert defense lawyers a judge condemned Miss Harris indifferences to the systematic violation of the defendant's constitutional rights okay so in this case she didn't defend that which was right but then she's saying that she's about defending the people okay now i'm just this is not you know you can say that i'm giving i'm putting a hit piece on her i'm just reading the facts i'm just breaking down the facts to you okay now miss harris contested the ruling by arguing that the judge whose husband was a defendant attorney and had spoken publicly about the importance of disclosing evidence had 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 a conflict of interest. Ms. Harris lost. Now, more than 600 cases handled by the corrupt te te technician were dismissed. We got 600 cases that were handled by this technician and that's 600 cases that were lost. No convictions of any kind. This happened under Kamala Harris watch in her office. They didn't do anything about it and she didn't do anything about it. These are the facts. Okay. Now, excuse me, folks. Miss Harris. Now, Miss Harris also refused in 2013 to defend California voters approved ban on sex, same sex marriage. So this is what happened. A lot of people don't know this. If you don't live in California, you wouldn't know this. Just like if you don't live in California, you don't know how we're impacted by this whole border situation where people coming over into this country in these border states. And California is a border state. This is what happened. The voters of California actually voted against same sex marriage. We did not want it. OK, what Gavin Newsom did now, Gavin Newsom was the mayor of San Francisco, along with Kamala Harris. They violated federal law. They did not go with the will of the people. They broke the law by having um, by making these gay by by carrying on gay marriages in San Francisco. That was during the time when you had people coming into San Francisco, people ain't even from San Francisco just so they can get married and they were being married unlawfully under the law that was never ratified into law in California and Kamala Harris was involved in this as well as Gavin Newsom as well who's now the governor of California and that is when she broke the she says she's for the people but at that time she broke the will and power of the people by certain ventilating the vote of the people and this is you can look at her record this is clear okay now, the, the Proposition 8 saying in press release, the Supreme Court had described marriage as a fundamental right 14, 14 times since 1888. The time has come for the right to be afforded to every citizen. So, you know, this is my point. And, I, and people can be with who they want to be with. That ain't my business. But my point is, is that she keeps saying that she's about the people and she didn't follow the will of the people because the voters of California originally said no to Proposition 8 to make gay marriage legal. Now, that's a fact, folks. You can check that out for yourself. This is Information Man. And that's what I'm about, uh, giving out information and knowledge that can wake up one's mind. Okay. Now let me um, get right. Let me jump right back into this again. Now, let me give you another example about Miss Harris, Kamala Harris. For instance, as Attorney General in 2016, she opposed the bill to require her office. This is her office to investigate shootings by police, and she declined to 
weighed in on state ballot measures to legalize recreational marijuana and to reduce penalties for nonviolent crimes. And despite her personal opposition to the death penalty, Harris defended in court as attorney general. So there's contradictions here. Now, right now we've got Prop 57 that passed in California that will allow um, uh, uh, people that are in prison who have none, who don't, who have none violent offenses to be able to come out out of prison. Then there's a lot of people in prison that are in there in California for um, selling, maybe selling drugs or maybe use of drugs. Right. I know this very well because I work in the prison system and mental health. I see the records. I see the documents. So I'm talking from experience. I'm probably one of the only few people within black YouTube who has this direct experience uh, in California. And I mean, I'm pretty sure there's other people out there, but I have this experience and I see a lot. And uh, I've said this over and over again. Black men in general are not in prison because they're doing mass murders uh, they're, or they're killing people or it's gained this more because of a uh, scouting from uh, from their parole. They might have uh, had a dirty, a dirty uh, drug test, their own drugs or either they were selling drugs, some kind of controlled substance. OK, now Kamala Harris says that she's for a better justice system. Well, one way to fix the justice system is to deal with people that are not in there for violent crime. That's Prop 57. And the first prop, as, as, as I stated, was a Prop 40. It was, let me see this again. It was a Prop 47. And she um, just wasn't, um, she just wasn't feeling it. Now, let me go over this again. Like I said, she weighed in. So she just wasn't a four um, at that time re dealing with the criminal justice system from that point of view. So there's a lot of contradictions and some of the things that uh, Kamala Harris states. Okay, so she took personal oppositions against making changes in criminal justice in California at that time. Now, I'm going to say this again. Time after time, when progressive urged Mrs. Kamala Harris, when progressives urged her to embrace criminal justice reform as a district attorney and then the state attorney general, Miss Harris, Kamala Harris, opposed them or stayed silent. OK. Now, there was a professor, Laura Brazana a professor at San Francisco Law School. Now, I know San Francisco Law School very well. I have friends that went to uh, San Francisco Law School. The school, at, that's at USF School of Law. Very good law school. San Francisco Law School and former director of Le Leola Law School Project for Innocent wrote in a New York Times op-ed. And you all know about the New York Times op-ed. Kamala Harris was not a progressive prosecutor. So what I would tell you all to do when you have a chance, and, and I'm pretty sure some of you have already looked at that, check out um, that article and um, the by this by this woman uh, in the New York Times op-ed title, uh, Kamala Harris is not a progressive prosecutor. And that's just, I've been hearing a lot of this, and what you do is you check out the record. You see if these are facts. Is this the reality? Let me go into... A little bit more of this in 2015, um, when a case reached the United States Courts of Appeal for the Ninth Circuit in San Francisco, Miss Harris, Kamala Harris, prosecutor at the time, defended the conviction. They pointed out that Miss uh, Mr. Gage, while forced to act as his own lawyer, had not properly raised the legal issue in the lower courts as the law required. OK, apparently judge the judge, a plaintiff. Let me see this. The appeal judge acknowledged this in this in this predicament and sent the case to the mediation. A clear signal for Miss Harris to dismiss to, to dismiss the case when she refused to budge the court upheld the conviction on the technic the te 
technicality that Mr. Gage is still in prison serving a 70 year sentence. Once again, and I'm going to say this again, Miss Harris, Kamala Harris says that my whole life I've been only had one client, the people. Harris told a crowd of thousand supporters in Oakland, she's for the people, okay? Now that's her mantra, that she's for the people. Here's a situation in which a man was in a situation that Miss Kamala Harris, she dropped the ball on, okay? Now, this case that I'm that I'm talking about, this case is not an is an out is an out is not an outlier. Miss Harris also fought to keep Mr. Larson in prison on 28 years to life. So this is another case uh, with Mr. Daniel Lawson, who she decided to keep him in prison for 28 years to life sentence for possession of a concealed weapon, even though his trial lawyer was incompetent and there was the compelling evidence of his innocence okay rather than now he now because of a technicality against him miss harris argued that mr Dan daniel lawson failed to raise his legal argument in timely fashion this time she lost So basically, once again, this is a situation where this is her history, folks. You can look it up. Let me name it. Here's another incident. Miss Harris, Miss Kamala Harris. She also defended uh, Johnny uh, Backer conviction for murder, even though judges found a prosecutor presented false testimony at the trial. She relented. She re she re she didn't. She only. After the, she reluctantly only after a video of the oral argument received national attention and embarrassed, embarrassed her office. So basically, once uh, Miss Kamala Harris received national embarrassing uh, press, bad news, only then she decided to act in the right fashion. OK, so this is very interesting. And then let me see, there was the case of Kevin Cooper, the death row inmate whose trial was inf infected by racism and corruption. He sought advanced DNA testing to prove his innocence. But Miss Harris, Kamala Harris, opposed it after the New York Times exposed of the case went viral. She reversed her position. So once again, another situation where she got bad pressed, bad pressed. And once it brought it got brought her it got brought to the light, then she reversed her decision. Only when bad press came her way, as you have a a, a man, black man who was being racially mistreated, and they did not use DNA. And you know, there's a lot of testing with DNA that has made gotten people all out of prison. And Kamala Harris, the so-called uh, present person, a uh, woman who's running for president says how she's for the people and that she's for better criminal justice. Interesting. Now, let me bring up another thing. All of this is a shame because the state top prosecutor has the power and she was the state top prosecutor of California. The state top prosecutor has the power and the ability to seek justice in case of taunting in case of questionable convictions, that means concealing evidence, overtoning them, overturning them, rather than fulfilling that obligation. Miss Harris turned legal technicalities into weapons so she could corrupt, so that she could suppress justices, that she could. Mm, interesting. Now, let me go right here and keep on. In the truth, we hold Miss Harris recently, recently published a memoir. She writes, America has a deep and a dark history of people using power, using their power of the prosecutor as an instrument of injustice. Now, that's her own words in her memoirs. And I just read you 
a few cases, and I'm sure there's there's some more. I read you just only a few cases in which she used poor judgment, in which she was giving out injustice, okay, and only reversed her decisions when what she was doing in the dark was being brought out to the light by the press. Okay, so this is what I'm saying. She's running for office now. You can't really trust uh, people. You can't, you can't trust these politicians. You can't uh, you can't uh, trust these uh, prosecutors. You can't trust people that are part of the system and the establishment. Okay, one thing you can't understand, folks, this is very important. In politics, listen to me now. In politics, there are no permanent friends. There are no permanent enemies. There is only permanent interests. And that's a fact. Another thing, which is why Kamala Harris has gotten to where she is now, is that we must understand that all government is local. What do I mean? Your government is in the community that you live in. Before you can talk about who's president, who's your senator, you must understand your local government government you are responsible for electing your school boards in some cases or you're responsible for electing your mayor your board all these different things in your local community kamala harris comes out of the local politics of san francisco and i must say this as you know her and willie brown had some type of relationship and many people believe that Willie Brown sort of steered her career because he has the political connections, whether good or bad, he has the political connections. And during that time, there was talk about him having a relationship with her while he was still married. I'm going to play a soundbite where he speaks up for himself and he tells you what was really going on. But let's be real. There, there's always been political favors. There's always been people that will wash one hand to get to another. There's all sex and drugs. All that is mixed up in politics. It's what make the world go round and people will use whatever they got to do. When you have someone that's ambitious, woman or man, they'll do whatever they got to do. Kiss enough ass, go to bed with people, whatever. When they're chasing power, chasing clout. Okay. And I have to be honest. From the time that I met her and talked to her in 2004, I was 34 years old at the time, it was pretty much obvious to me that this was an ambitious woman, a very ambitious woman, okay? And when people are ambitious, they'll do whatever they got to do to get to the top and do what they got to do to get there. That's just the fact. That's just reality, okay? Now, let me just go right ahead. She add. let me see. Miss Harris adds, I know this history well of innocent men framed and charges brought against people without sufficient evidence. Prosecutors hiding information that would otherwise exonerate or make an individual or defendant innocent of the disproportionate application of law. Now, check this out. I just read earlier. There was a there was a brother who was being railroaded with racism. He wanted to get a DNA test to clear his name. She did not want to give him that. Only until the press began, once I said, to put pressure on her. Then she changed her mind. What I'm saying to you folks, and you can do the research for yourself. I'm not here to think for anybody, but I am here to give you information. Okay? Because information, as I said, is very powerful. That's right. Information is power. So we got to be aware. Now, I'm just being honest with you. I'm not I don't I'm not a Democrat. I'm not a Republican. You can say I'm independent, but I don't trust either one of these parties. The Democrat Party will screw you with Vaseline. The Republican Party screws you without Vaseline. Either way, you get screwed. A lot of these politicians talk a good game. OK, they say everything you want to hear. They get in the office and you don't hear from them again. They do whatever. Kamala Harris in 2004 talked a real good game, became district attorney of San Francisco, never came back to meet with us again, even though we 
were involved in her campaign and supported her, never saw the sister again. See? And my question again to black men, black people, everybody out there, don't vote for any politician unless you know what tangibles they're going to give you. Now, this is the thing that we have to understand. And I think we get it wrong in American society. We act like polit we act like we work for politicians. No, we don't. Politicians work for us. We don't work for them. So therefore, we must hold their feet and their asses to the fire. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. We must always hold them to the fire of everything that they say and do. Oh, this is the one that I was, I, I think I had, I was trying to read. In 2014, she declined to take a position on Prop 47, a ballot initiating approval for voters that reduced a certain lower level felonies to a misdemeanor. She laughed that year when a reporter asked Ms. Harris if she would support the legalization of marijuana for recreational use. Ms. Harris finally re revised the course in 2018, long after the public opinion had shifted on the topic. So she had she didn't want anything to do with it, but she changed her mind in 2018. Guess what? All of a sudden, 2019, she wants to run for president. Like I said, in politics, there's no permanent enemies, no permanent uh, friends, only permanent interests. Her interests change as she saw society changing in certain areas and she wants to be electable. She wants to get elected. So they do and say whatever they want people, they think people want to hear. Okay. Let me uh, go to another area. Miss Harris also championed a state legislation under which parents whose children were found to be um, a tyrant towards their parents, uh, tyrants in elementary school. So children, parents of children, Children that are seen as tyrants in elementary school could be prosecuted despite concerns that it would disproportionately affect lower income people of color or people. I hate that term, people of color. So basically, she's saying that parents that have children who have behavior problems at school in some way should be prosecuted. The parents should be prosecuted. Very crazy stuff. I mean, I, th I believe me. Parents should be held accountable for the behavior of the kids. Don't get me wrong, but it's a little, it's, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, Kamala Harris is, you know, she's doing whatever she's got to do to get elected, I guess. Ms. Harris was similarly regressive as the state's attorney general when a federal judge in Orange County ruled that the death penalty was unconstitutional in 2014. Ms. Harris appealed. And in a public statement, she made the bizarre argument that the decision undermines the important protections that our courts provide to defendants. Approximately 740 men and women await execution in California. Might this be a disagreement? Now, check this out. I've been to San Quentin. I've been in the death row. I've been in the death row chambers. I've been in, I mean, I've been in the chambers where they actually commit the, the, the uh, execution. I'm telling you, you never want to be in those kind of chambers. It's the most bizarre feeling. It's got a real negative energy in there. Never want to go in there again. But there's over 740 men on death row. And Kamala Harris makes these kind of statements. Now, in 2015, she opposed the bill requiring her office to investigate shootings involving officers. OK, now we know black people that. We tend we tend to be the victims of police shootings. OK, shooting us unarmed. We've had many black men shot over the last few years unarmed by police. OK, now remember, prosecutors work at the hip with police. They have relationships with the police department. They work in concert with the police department. And with her being top cop of California at one point in time, she goes lock, stock and barrel with them. Let me say this again. In 2015, she opposed the bill requiring her office to investigate a shooting involving officers as she refused to support statewide standards regulating the use of body of body worn cameras by police officers. So she at some point was against body cams. OK, unbelievable. For this, she occurred criticism 
from a variety of left people on the left, progressives. All right. Leaning to reform back to reform again, including Democrat state senators, the ACLU and San Francisco elected public defenders. The activist Patricia Jones, who had supported Miss Harris for years, for years, asked how many more people need to die before she steps in. So when Kamala Harris had the power to put certain laws in place, certain provisions in place as it relates to cops killing people the way they've been doing in some cases, she did nothing about it. In fact, for someone that says she wants to reform criminal justice, my God. Now, let me make this last few statements. Worst of all, though, is Miss Harris record on wrongful conviction cases. Consider George Cage. We're going back to the case of George Cage again. A, a electrician with no criminal record who was charged in 1999 with sexual abusing, abusing his stepdaughter who reported the allegations years later. The case largely hinged on the stepdaughter's testimony and Mr. Cage was convicted. Afterwards, the judge discovered that the prosecutors had unlawfully held back potential expressatory, 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 expressatory evidence. I'm sorry, I'm having a hard time pronouncing that word, but that's a legal term. Evidence, including medical reports, including that the stepdaughter had been repeatedly untruthful with law enforcement. Her mother even described her as a pathological liar who li who who lives her life in lies. So he was the guy that when the evidence came out that there was evidence being held back, scorpatory evidence was being held back and there was lies being levied. Her office did nothing. Kamala Harris did nothing when it was proven that the young lady was not being honest about the abuse from the stepfather that it did not it did not happen and so those are some of the things that i wanted to break down about one kamala harris and like i said she's moved rapidly through the ranks of her political career being a prosecutor and prosecutors really don't tend to get elected as presidents in some cases because of issues now another thing i must bring up is um her relationship with Willie Brown. And for those of you out there who don't like the swerving, uh, well, let's just keep it real. Miss Kamala Harris is not as much as people want to say, oh, she's a she's a, a black woman. Uh, the truth of the matter is um, she's of mixed heritage. We must keep that in mind. But the reality is, is that she's not married black. Now, you can see. From the picture that I have on here now, I'm putting a picture up now. Um, her husband is a mayonnaise man. Um, she did not marry black. And I always, and I, st I believe this, and this is just how I feel personally, that you, we have to keep this in mind that who a person is married to, who they covet, speaks a lot about their politics. Who they wake up in the morning who they make love to, who they're talking to, their intimacy, their closest person is that person that they're married to. Okay? Says a lot about their, can say a lot about their politics, their ideology, who they're having pillow talk with. And as you can see up there, the man that she lays in a bed with and gives that loving to, damn sure ain't a black man. There you see it. But let me play a soundbite by one Willie Brown to add some more perspective to my presentation. And I hope everybody out there um, is doing well right now. You're listening to the Information Man show, radio style, podcast, speaker, talk, cost, ca, speaker, speaker podcast. Thank you, everybody out there for uh, listening to me and supporting the show Sorry about that. I'm a little, um, had a little bit of a tongue twist there. Information is power. 
information is power. There's no doubt in my mind. And we should always tell the truth. We should always tell the truth. Tell the truth. So let me go ahead and play this presentation. This is Willie Brown as it relates to their relationship. There was something going on. Um, Gavin Newsom, who's the governor of California, he got himself caught up in some things while he was mayor of San Francisco. He was quite the little player. He was a quite a he was quite an individual doing some things too. And San Francisco politics is like this. Um, you've got people messing with this person, that person. San Francisco, um, you know, has this label as being a liberal city. And I'm telling you right now, San Francisco is just is just as corrupt as any other city, if not more. And this whole liberalism. Look, if you got the color, if you got the complexion for the protection, you're going to benefit in San Francisco. Uh, the black population in San Francisco is literally unexistent. It's like we don't even exist anymore there. And what happens is a lot of black people have moved from San Francisco. It's an, it's an exodus. From San Francisco, the Hunters Point area, the Betrayal Hill area, the Fillmore area, which I know very well, Bayview here at Hunters Point. They're moving over to the East Bay because it's cheaper to live. The weather is better. And it's just becoming a place that culturally isn't speaking to black people much anymore. And things are changing. And we really don't. Black people really have no power even when Willie Brown was mayor of San Francisco, he really wasn't able to execute the things that he wanted to do for black people the way he wanted to. Now, I'm just going to keep it real. San Francisco is a city that is controlled and run by 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 people that are gay, LGBT. And so he or she that is in power controls everything. And he who he and she who controls mass media controls the mind, which is why they're trying to spin this narrative that. Uh, Kamala Harris is for the people. She's real. I'm going to play a video for you in her rally where she's talking the same sort of talking points as President Obama. It's like President Obama, you know, 2.0 all over again. And I'm just a person. I, I I'm like this. I'm like this in relationships, friends, loved ones, anyone I know. I don't go by what people say out of their mouth anymore. I go by what you do. That speaks louder than any words that you could say out of your mouth. And that's just the damn truth. Tell the truth. Okay, just that's just the facts of the matter as far as I'm concerned. So let me go ahead and um, play this by one Willie Brown. It should be an eye opener. Willie Brown. Here we go. I saw your piece where you talked about uh, once uh, dating Senator Kamala Harris and people were really upset with you uh, for even writing that. Why did you decide to do that? Well, let me tell you. One, eight, nine different folk from a world of the media had called to ask me. We saw your picture here. You were in the LA Times. You were at the Academy Awards, and each time it was you and Kamala Harris, uh, who is now married or to someone or in whom you clearly must have had some relationship with. So, of course, I dated Miss Harris 25, 30 years ago. So what? What does that have to do with anything? It's, well, you know, it's, it's an issue. I said, well, fine. It's an issue. It will be out of the way long before you look at the incredible qualifications of this great potential president of these United States. Period. That's why I did it. I did it to get it out of the way. And and so that you give her a heads up that, hey, Senator, I'm going to go ahead and put this out there. People are asking me, uh, and I can just knock it out of the way? No, well, let me tell you, I didn't have to give a heads up. The New York Times gave my heads up. New York Times printed uh, one of those places, printed a story and the story was inaccurate, period. And when she was apparently approached, uh, she had no comment. Well, you know, no comment is bullshit for me in, in this world, just like it is for you. And so, consequently, I just decided, wait a minute. You ask me the question, I'm going to end it, answer it. 
and I entered it for one CBS, I think, or NBC, one of the two, and then I just wrote what I said when I answered the question. And of course, there are some there are some who are uh, critical of you, uh, trying to say, well, also for her, why was she dating this married man? Why is he taking credit for her career by saying uh, that uh, I supported her career? How would you respond to that? Well, I did support her career, uh, and uh, you know, I was married, but I have been separated before meeting her. I've been separated for twenty five years. <laughs> And I've been separated for almost 50 years, but I've been separated for 25 years. So uh, the reference of, of separation uh, clearly means uh, absolutely nothing uh, for all practical purposes. One would never consider me as being a married person. Let me also tell you that it's kind of amazing Robin, that she was elected mayor. Uh, she was elected district attorney of San Francisco, the first woman. San Francisco knew in detail of the previous relationship. They had been part of that, so to speak. She was then elected Attorney General of the State of California. Same knowledge. She was then elected U.S. Senator. The same knowledge. So there is no liability and no negative associated with it. It only becomes a negative in the minds of the people who want to stop her from achieving the work. Must not allow that to occur. And uh, there are others who, again, I'm reading different pieces, and they're saying Willie Brown saying he had saying that he influenced her career. Uh, you were you're the longest serving uh, speaker in the history of the California Assembly, uh, a major power broker in California politics from across the country. <laughs> Willie Brown is a major uh, powerhouse when it comes to politics in California and abroad. Um, I actually had a chance to meet him. I did vote for him when he became mayor. I've uh, talked to him personally as he's a member of my fraternal organization. And I've also uh, had a chance to ask him questions when he ran for mayor. Uh, matter of fact, he um, gathered at a house uh, right across the street from where my mother lives when he was campaigning and I had a chance to have some personal touch and conversation with the brother. But uh, there is Willie Brown and you can, uh, I don't want to put any thoughts in people's mind, but you can make of what you want to make of it. Uh, let's just keep it real. He's a man, she's a woman. And as he said, he um, was still uh, separated from his wife for 25 years already prior to um, having a relationship with Kamala Harris. He says that it was a known thing in San Francisco. And as I said, these things do happen in San Francisco where people are having relationships. Now, come on, let's be honest. If you're having a relationship with someone, come on now, if I, if I have a girlfriend or a wife or someone I'm involved with, common sense tells you, you're going to do some personal favors for that person because you have an affection for them. You have a love for them. And so out of that love for them and affection, you're going to sometimes do some extra things for them. You're going to give them some extra love. So you can read into it however you like to. But, you know, Willie Brown said it and he's a man. She's a woman. And you already know what goes down in those cases. Sometimes let's be honest about it because we are adults and we must always tell the truth. We must always uh, tell the truth. So. Let me just make this make this other announcement right now as uh, let me see right here. Now, as it relates to black women, and I talked about you should never allow politicians to fool you. They're going to use highfalutin statements. They're going to use things that appeal to you because they just want your vote. And it was Willie Brown who, who told me or, or, or not told me personally, but when I was at a gathering that he was at, he said to to all of us. That the one thing that politicians fear the most is being out of office, being put out of office. They covet being in office. They covet the perks of it, the back room perks, the back pocket perks that they get. And so you can't trust these politicians. They're very slick. I don't care if they're black, white, woman, whatever they are. OK. And personally, 
um, you know, with Kamala Harris' husband being a mayonnaise man, I don't think that this country is ready for there to be a a what we would call a uh, interracial White House where you've got a white man being the first husband. I don't think uh, I don't think white men in this country would let that happen. I don't even think uh, white women would want to let that see that happen. I, I just don't think the cards are going to work for the Democratic Party. And if this is the best that they have to offer, they might as well just hand Donald Trump um, a new a, 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 his second term. I'm really concerned about this now. As it relates to black women, I don't want to see black women be bamboozled by Kamala Harris at all. But this is what happens when they run when people run for election. They're going to try to appeal to certain groups. And black women are a strong Democratic voting block. Now, this is what's happening in Oakland. A lot of y'all may not know about this. See, when you live where I'm living, you get information about stuff closer to where you live. Kamala Harris for president. Is she truly for black people? Black women in elected leadership. This was on Facebook. Says here, Sunday, February 17th at 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. Pacific time in, in the next two weeks at 2501 International Boulevard in Oakland, California, 94601, uh, 1509, the United States. Tickets are available at www.bwel.org. If you want to come check her out, if you are in the area, that's what's going on. And as I said earlier, her main headquarters, they said, is going to be in Baltimore. And her other main headquarters will be in Oakland, California, in the downtown area. And there are people that are planning to protest her headquarters. This is just some of the things that happen. Now, what I want to do right now is I have a, a friend of mine who's a street activist. He's got his foot on the ground. And I had a chance to interview him about Kamala Harris to get his honest opinion about her. And once again, if you want to see where she's getting her money, you need to check out OpenSecrets.org. OpenSecrets.org. Um, and she's getting money from Hollywood is all is, is definitely involved in her campaign. Big time law firms are involved in giving, you know, are, are, are heavily involved in donating to her. And if you ever want to know the politics of an individual, always follow the money. The money and where they're getting their donations tells you everything you need to know about what type of um, public servant. Is she serving the people or is she serving the corporations? I would say when you run for president, you're always serving the corporations. People, no, you're not serving the people. That's just campaign falutin statements. Tell the truth. Truth. Well, everybody, um, I hope that you've enjoyed the, um, the presentation. What I'm going to do now, hope everybody, I'm going to say this again, I hope you enjoyed this presentation, um, where we, how we went about um, uh, uh, analyzing this whole situation with Kamala Harris. What I simply did was go over her record. And I, I don't I don't even think I touched on everything, but I touched on enough to show you that there is some contradictions in what she says in terms of her campaign speeches and what she wants to do. I'm just saying that you got to make a smart choice. Uh, there's going to be a bunch of other candidates that are going to be running. I think Cory Booker is going to throw his hand into the ring. But we know that he um, got his hands in the bank. He's got his hands in the bank with the bankers as well. So the bankers got control of him, too. Uh, these politicians, I mean, uh, one of the problems with politics in America is that there's too much money involved in it. And I don't know if many of us realize that in America, we believe that we have a democracy where we vote for who's president. No, I'm going to say this again. We do not select the president. They are selected for us. All we do is elect. I think it was um, Dick Gregory I heard say that once. Another thing that we need to come to grips with is that we really live in a polyocracy. What is a, poly a, a polyocracy? A polyocracy is when you, every four to eight years, you are voting to put the next elite class into office. Where do most of these elite class go to? 
They go to Harvard, Yale, the Ivy League schools. So every year we're clamoring to figure out which one of these rich, privileged individuals are going to get in the office. Okay, now Kamala Harris went to Howard, but she's made certain connections. She's coming out of that same political prosecution kind of machine. And just keep in mind that we don't select these people. We elect them, but they are selected for us. And that is a problem. And money that's involved in politics is another problem because the average person can't run for president. You've got to have some wealth or you have to have some connections and one with, on one level or another. So with that said, I want you to go ahead and check out this video of Kamala Harris when she was in Oakland. I want you to closely examine the numbers of black people that were in the audience, her message, and I believe her message is pretty much the same recycled message that one President Obama stated years in 2008 when he ran on the slogan, hope, change, yes we can. Kamala Harris is using this, she's for the people, by the people type stuff, saying Falutin, highfalutin slogans and statements that politicians have been using. There is no enemies in politician. There is no permanent friends, no permanent uh, enemies. There is only permanent interest. I must say that again. So check out this video, examine it just like I was saying, and uh, you be the judge yourself of what you think. With that said, this is the Information Man. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. I love my country. I'm running to be president of the people, by the people, and for all people. I'm running to fight for an America where the economy works for working people. For an America where you only have to work one job to pay the bills. And where hard work is rewarded and where any worker can join a union. I am running to declare once and for all that health care is a fundamental right and we will deliver that right with Medicare for all. I am running to declare education is a fundamental right. And we will guarantee that right with universal pre-K and debt-free college. I am running to guarantee working and middle-class families an overdue pay increase. We will deliver the largest working and middle-class tax cut in a generation up to $500 a month to help America's families make ends meet. It's the man with the info. Whatever you want to know, come join the man with the info show. It's the info. It's the man with the info. Whatever you want to know, come join the man with the info show. It's the info. It's the info. Whatever you want to know, come join the man with the info show. It's the info, we got the info Whatever you wanna know, come join the man with the info show It's the info man, you can call him information, info man